A warm welcome to everyone taking time out of their day to join me for Tuesday Tips with Taylor. Here at Always Best Care, we strive to provide quality care to our clients in the same way we would provide care to a loved one. November is National Family Caregivers Month. To kick off this month's Tuesday Tips segments, I'd like to talk about the challenges faced by family caregivers and how we can each help to take some of the stress out of juggling the care of a loved one and the care of oneself. Currently, there are about 332 million people in the United States, and according to the Alzheimer's Association's facts and figures for 2022, 11 million Americans are providing unpaid care in the U.S., and that's just for people that are living with Alzheimer's disease. I want to first break down an average day for a family caregiver. Mornings most likely consist of getting their loved one up, dressed, fed, and medications taken, all while trying to get themselves either off to work or possibly young kids off to school. Throughout the day, medication reminders continue to be extremely important. For family caregivers who have a loved one with a cognitive impairment, trying to figure out the best way to make sure that their loved one takes medications can be very challenging, especially if the primary caregiver is working full time. Self-care outside of work hours can be very difficult. In most cases, when a family caregiver arrives home after a long day at work, the responsibility of caring for an aging loved one poses more tasks, leaving little time to rest and reset, and it leaves little time for um, family time, um, time to plan appropriate and nutrition, nutritious meals for um, oneself and family members, which can cause health issues uh, later down the road. Many seniors also face chronic conditions that can cause frequent hospitalizations without proper oversight of the condition. This can lead to ER visits in the middle of the night, which interrupts the sleep of both the senior and the family caregiver, who often either opts to be there or may need to be there depending on their loved one's cognition. As a community, it's really important to support those around us, offer to provide some assistance with a morning routine, or maybe offer to take a neighbor's kids to school if you know that they're caring for an aging loved one as well. Look for a day program that can assist with verbal medication reminders, or you might invest in an automated, uh, automated medication dispenser at home, which releases medications at a specific time and can notify a family member if those medications are not taken within a specific time frame. You could also try bringing respite care in um, at home to allow yourself time to relax, take a break, or even focus on your own health needs, which unfortunately, um, in more cases than not, family caregivers' health tends to decline much quicker than the individual that they're caring for. And lastly, taking the time to reach out to your loved one's healthcare provider for guidance on medication, uh, managing certain chronic conditions can help to limit rehospitalizations. Nobody knows what somebody else is dealing with in life. Take some extra time to lend a hand or offer a listening ear to those around you. It may be the be best gift you could give somebody. Thank you so much for joining me today, and I look forward to seeing you next time.